So now we're talking about perpendicular lines. This first theorem um, I didn't put in our proof cards because we don't use it that much, but I will talk about it real, real quick. Um, this one says that if two lines intersect to form a linear pair of congruent angles, then the lines are perpendicular. Basically, if angle one is congruent to angle two, then line G is perpendicular to line H. Okay, and that kind of makes sense, right? If you see that this is a straight angle, these have to add up to be 180, and they're each congruent, then, then they each have to be 90 degrees, right? That makes sense. This next one, though, I do have in your proof cards, and I, there's no name for it, so I, the name of it is simply just whatever it says. If two lines are perpendicular, then they intersect to form four right angles. And you can see that that's what it says on your proof card. All right, so you don't really need to do much except maybe uh, draw this diagram. So you might want to say, okay, if if these are if B if B is perpendicular to A, then um, well, we could say yeah, we could just say angle. One, two, three, and four are right angles, like it says over here. That's another way of saying it with that diagram. All right, so let's use these two in and apply it. So in this diagram at the right, we know angles one and two are congruent. So what can we conclude about A and B? Well, from that first theorem, that would mean these are both right angles. So A has to be perpendicular to B. All right, now let's do a proof. All right, so look at what we're given. And we're going to use some of the theorems from the previous video to help us do this. We know that M is perpendicular to P, so we're going to remember in proof, we always start with the diagram, so I'm going to mark that M is perpendicular to P, and M is perpendicular to Q. So we want to prove that P is parallel to Q. Well, what are the ways we can prove lines parallel? Right, those four converse theorems or the... Um, transitive property parallel. Now, here, transitive property parallels won't work because we don't have three parallel lines or three lines. So it's going to be one of those other converse. So I would probably suggest that if these, I naturally mark these and these make that F shape. So I would probably use the corresponding converse theorems or cap converse. So I'm just going to write myself a note. I would use the cap converse theorem here. All right, so let's write this up. So for our statements, we're going to start with what we were given, which was that M is perpendicular to P and M is perpendicular to Q. And what did we do to show that in our diagram? We said that this angle was right. We put this right angle right here. Let's go ahead and label these. I'm going to label this angle one and angle two because I don't have any other markings. So we would say angle one. We can either say angle one is right or we can say the measure of angle one is equal to 90. Um, let's go ahead and say the measure of angle one is, is equal to 90 degrees and the measure of angle two is equal to 90 degrees. And that's, how do we know that? Well, that's because we, that's what we mean by perpendicular. So that's the definition of perpendicular. So from there, we can say the measure of angle one equals the measure of angle two. And that's either transitive property or substitution property. Let's go ahead and use transitive. Remember that cap converse uses congruence, not equals. So we need to switch this over to congruence. So angle one is congruent to angle two. That's just our definition of congruence. And now we can say, since these are uh, corresponding angles in our diagram, we can say then that P is parallel to Q. And that's because of the cap converse. 
So the reason I wanted to do this proof is because the next two theorems that we're going to talk about, one of them uses this idea. Okay, it's the second one. So let's look at the second one first. I know that's not usually how we do things, but the uh, lines perpendicular to a transversal theorem. Another shorter name is the dual perpendicular theorem. Notice that it says if two lines are perpendicular to the same line. So we're talking about that transversal. So I have two lines that are perpendicular. You see how we have that cap converse situation there? Then they are parallel to each other. So for example, if we were to draw this diagram, you might want to put on your proof card. If M is perpendicular to P and N is perpendicular to P, you see how they're both perpendicular to that same line? Then M and N are parallel. Make sure you put parallel. It's very tempting to put perpendicular because it looks like a transitive property. But if they're perpendicular to the same line, then these are going to be parallel. Okay, that's your dual perpendicular theorem. That one you use quite a bit, so that's why we have that shorter name for that. Okay, so we did the second one first. Now let's go back to this one. So in this one up here, the perpendicular transversal theorem. Notice what we have to start with. If a transversal is, here's our transversal, is perpendicular to one of parallel lines. Notice that these are marked parallel already. So you had to know these lines are parallel. Then we know it is perpendicular to the other. Okay, and that's just by using that original uh, corresponding angles theorem. So if H is parallel to K, and J is perpendicular to H, then J is perpendicular to K as well. So notice that what the two things you have to have in order to use this theorem, both of those, in order to know that final conclusion. So let's use these. So in the diagram, we're going to figure out, is C parallel to D? So notice nothing is marked parallel. We have some things marked perpendicular. But here we have C and D. Do you notice how these both have right angles on them? So this transversal A is perpendicular to both C and D. So we can use the dual perpendicular theorem. So we can say yes using the dual perpendicular theorem. Now it's asking is B perpendicular to D. Well, now that we know C is parallel to D, and we have B is marked perpendicular to C, then we know by that first theorem, the perpendicular transversal theorem, that that will also be perpendicular. So we would say yes using the perpendicular transversal theorem. So there's how you can use those perpendicular theorems. We don't use them a lot, but um, we do use them from time to time, so I want you to have those on your proof cards. 